Well, I'm glad you could make time to watch the program this morning. Uh, you're welcome to Business Time. We're still pitching camp at the Ghana Economic Forum at the Maven Peak Ambassador Hotel here in Accra. We've brought you some conversations already in previous episodes, and like I said, we'll be here. We'll bring you some of the pertinent interviews uh, on issues that matter to you as a business or as, a, as an individual as far as economic growth is concerned. So we'll continue with our conversation on creating an enabling environment. This time we'll talk to Bennett Quente, who is a strategist and financial consultant. Uh, he's founder and chief executive of Sync Consult. You can have an, you, you probably have an idea already of what they do at Sync uh, Consult. But first, we'll bring you uh, the news roundup, and then along the line, we'll bring you investment tip for the week. We'll wrap it up with the commodities and forex market activities that occurred uh, the week past. Uh, my name is Camille Amano. Just take the boy. Please, can I check my number? Okay. Wow! Gimme! You have won the ultimate prize, a brand new car! What? A car? Yes, a car, not a toy car. This is the key to your car. Wait, call your daddy. Okay, okay, okay. Alright. So you see, he has won a car. But there are four more cars to be won, plus other amazing prizes and many more in the Giant Mart Open and Win promotion from July to October 2016. Just buy a can of Giant Mart. Open a lid and the number you find under it, voila, you can go to any Roman distributor or Royal Boat Depots to redeem your prizes instantly. Giant Mart Open and Win promotion. On Napo, terms and conditions apply. Welcome back to the program. First, let's take a look at stories that made rounds over the week on News Roundup. The ride-sharing firm Uber will for the first time allow users to hail self-driving cars later this month. According to Bloomberg Businessweek, Uber's chief executive Travis Kalanick said the launch would take place in Pittsburgh in Pennsylvania. At first, the vehicles will be supervised by a driver who can take control if necessary. In this week's episode two, like I mentioned earlier, we'll continue our conversation around creating an enabling environment, which is the crux of uh, the, the reasons that we've gathered here today as the Mozambique Ambassador Hotel for the Ghana Economic Forum. We've heard from Tony Oting, JC, who uh, was chairman for the forum. And now we want to hear from strategist and financial consultant and founder of uh, Sync Council. We'll continue the conversation about creating that enable, enabling environment and also private sector participation in the growth of the economy. Bennett Spenty is our guest on Business Time today. Thank you for accepting to be on Business Time. But today you're speaking at the Ghana Economic Forum. Uh, give us highlights of what to expect from you. All right. Um, thank you very much, um, Kemeni. I'm going to be talking about the private sector of Ghana. Um, I've been working with the private sector for almost 20 years, and in 2012, we actually spoke to almost 100 key um, companies in Ghana, and we also spoke to the SME. So between then and now, uh, one has gathered a lot of talk, uh, thoughts and also through interactions with them to share the sentiments and also their expectations in terms of what the government should be doing for them to be successful. Let's start off with uh, some of those sentiments that over the years you have gathered from the, the, the private sector. What, what are those? Right, and one of them would be, for instance, um, like the private sector is seen as an enemy of the state. And you see that reflect in policies. And uh, policies are unfavorable because the thinking is that where private sector makes money and all that, so let's find a way and, and punish them or make things uncomfortable to, uh, for them because when what they make money... Such as what? So I'll give an example, like we told in taxes. Mm -hmm. You know, when you deliver a service, um, you know, you definitely will receive payment less withholding tax. And at that point, the withholding tax is actually being taken on your gross. So as to whether you're going to make a loss 
or not on that service, the taxes have already be, been taken. And what if you make a loss on that particular transaction? Government would have taken it. And typically, the taxes should have come after you have computed your costs and then seen what is coming in as, you know, your net profit. But are you not supposed to get your withholding taxes back? Um, you get it back, but when you make a loss, how do you get it back? If you make profit, yeah, but if you make a loss, you don't typically get it back from government. So then you would have paid taxes when you shouldn't be paying taxes on that uh, particular situation. Okay, so that's just one of the sentiments, the yeah. fact that some policies position uh, the private sector as an enemy of, 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 of the, the state. state. And another one would be, for instance, there's this thinking among some public sector people or the government that, you know, private sector makes too much money and, you know, we need to find a way to stop them from making money. But the whole thing is that private sector is about the bottom line. It's about making profit. And the thing is, the profit is, a, you know, a, there's a relationship between risk and returns. And private sector will actually put money in when the returns are high because they would have computed their risk. So if, as a government, you have issues, you know, with the private sector making money, then you really have big issues because the private sector is supposed to make money, a lot of it. And the reason is this, about 70% of every economy, and this is globally, is actually accounted for by the private sector a minimum of 70%, and in some emerging economies like ourselves, that could be 80%, you know. And if private sector is not making money, obviously they won't be interested in doing what they should be doing, and the economy is going to suffer. You know, so uh, it's, it's a misconception, but that's really what sometimes you find happen. How, how then would you describe a uh, government's bid of wanting to create an enabling environment for the pri private sector? Because over the years, that's something we've had throughout every conversation from the finance minister or even the president creating the enabling environment? Um, the issue with enabling environment, for instance, is something we have heard over the past well, 15 years or even more. And then we also hear that uh, the private sector is an engine of growth. But it has been, if you look at the situation of the private sector today, it's so difficult. I mean, you borrow at over 30%. You are paying utility. Look at the, the utility bills. Um, look at the cost of fuel. And, you know, the policies you deal with, I mean, I talked about the tax, it's so difficult. So the thing is, government needs to step up. And to be able to do that, the government needs to engage the private sector. I mean, sit and then engage. I mean, we've been doing that, engaging the private sector as, as, a, as a country. We've, we've heard finance minister will tell you, well, they're engaging the private sector also, so and so. They even have the PPP, which has now come to stay, for which reason we have the Minister of State in charge of PPP. So we've been engaging the private sector. What's not working? Okay, so let me find out from you. About two years ago, well, let's say two years ago, um, interest rates were not less than 25%. Today, interest rate is about 30%. So, True. and we've had this thing in the past two, three years. So, so something, it's about the implementation. It's about the behavior of government. Now, of course, we all know there are difficulties. But how do you insulate the private sector from the problems of government? I mean, and that's what has to happen. Because if, for instance, the government is borrowing a lot from the, uh, you know, from, from the market, financial market, then the market is crowded out. So private sector has no access to funds. So access to credit is a big problem. And one of the biggest challenges we need to do is how to get government out of that, you know, space. What, what would it take to get government to do the right things? One of it would be is fiscal discipline. That for government to spend only what it generates and not overspend. Because you borrow when your expenditure is more than you know, your income. You know, so, so there are realities we need to deal with, and that actually has to do with government discipline. Now, we hear, we, we hear that um, the government is actually trying its best you know, to, to address the situation, but there's reality for the private sector. And the reality for the private sector is that I'm borrowing at 30% now, and I was borrowing at 25%. How many years more would I continue in this? And they can't actually effectively uh, predict that because you know, nobody knows, you know, so really um, it's the will of the government to, to make sure that happens, um, so. But every four years we seem to be encountered with that problem and uh, what are your projections for businesses in this election year? Do you see things taking, how do you see things going after the election? All right, I would say the past two years or so, we've been going through some difficult times. And of course, we are told that we are almost out of the trough and we are looking up. 
Uh, my, my, I wouldn't be able to predict much for this year, but my expectation is that we're going to see a better economy next year because we'd have gone through the um, elections. There will be the anxiety levels will go down. And, um, you know, people will begin to look at the next four years, and of course they can project and then take long term decisions. But uh, between now and December, I really don't see any major. Uh, um, change from the situation. If anything, it might get slightly worse before it begins to improve from the beginning of next year. Like you said, it will get slightly worse before we see the, the, the improvement we desire. Now, while in this period, how should businesses position themselves? What I would say is that they should take decisions based on the medium term and long term, beyond the next four or five months into the election and just uh, immediately after. So they should begin to project from the beginning of the year. And the midterm outlook is not that bad uh, because a lot of positive things are going to happen in the economy, especially once we go to the election. You know, people are going to be a bit more expectant of you know, better policies, uh, better you know, relationships and all that. So my advice would be to look beyond the immediate. Uh, they should brace themselves for and continue the difficulties. But of course, beyond that, uh, they should look forward to some good times. Mm. At the beginning of our conversation, you mentioned the fact that uh, you've worked over the years with businesses and you know, you know the sentiments and all that. Now, in, in working with, in, in gathering all that experience over the years, is the problem only with government? So let me tell you what it is. Uh, we profile some Ghanaian businesses and what we noticed was that there's somebody who started a business with, let's say, um, one, I think it is shillings then. Mm -hmm. and, to, and of course, started selling paracetamol. And I'll mention the name of the company. Now, today, this company is a big national company that actually has employed some expatriates working for this company. Now, it took this company almost 40 years from trading to become a big company. Now, if that is how long it would take, and obviously, the government should be able to come and say, look, it takes 40 years. We want this thing to happen in 10 years. Do you know what it means if you're able to create 10 such firms, let's say, every 10 years? But if you leave them on your own, it's going to take 40 years. So without the support of government, without that enabling environment, the growth process is too slow, so it takes too long. Does it mean that as, as private sector, you don't have a role to play in creating that enabling environment? One of the biggest challenges you have is access to capital. And it's so difficult in our part of the world. I mean, t sometimes even locally, you need to create, you know, uh, get collaterals. And how many people can get collateral? Let's say five million US dollars to buy equipment for manufacturing. How many Ghanaian companies can raise a collateral to support that kind of, you know, uh, uh, funding? You know? So, so the real difficulty is that there's a need to s provide that environment to support the private sector to access funding. No. We, we've been trying to uh, deal with our fiscal problems for a while now. I mean, I think it, it, it goes beyond just uh, this government. It's something we've been dealing with over the years. Why haven't we got it right yet? Ghana has a big economy. And what I think is that we have to be very pragmatic and do things, infrastructure outside of, you know, the government budget. So the PPP, uh, you know, a strategy, for instance, one of the ways in which that could have been done of course, we started a bit late, but it's, it's almost taken off. One of the ways is to look, you know, differently, be very pragmatic and proactive in terms of how we fund this project. We have to get, you know, um, you know access to long-term funds. Mm -hmm. Funds which are, you know, we use the term patient, you know, for 15, 20 years, and then do the major infrastructure project. If you do them on the back of your budget, then you are in trouble. But the other thing we also need to do, I'm sure you're aware of the salaries. Mm -hmm. The government, uh, public sector salaries, actually, since the, the increase has affected government's you know, uh, position in terms of expenditure. And, and we need to look at it because we need to spend what we generate and then find a way to do the capital investment outside of, of that. I, I don't know if you were in the first session that just took place with the finance minister, but in, in addressing debt, he made mention of the stabilization and sinking funds to be able to address uh, the, the debts we have accrued. Uh, over the years and perhaps what will, will accrue in the future. But <laughs> is, is that a way to go from where you sit? I, I think it, uh, it's a major step which we should all applaud the minister for. Um, the real thing is, I always say there's reality, and the reality is that, I mean, how long would it take for us to begin to see, you know, uh, the results?
check my number. Okay. Wow! Give me! You have won the ultimate prize, a brand new car. What? A car? Yes, a car, not a toy car. This is the key to your car. Wait, call your daddy. Okay, okay, okay. All right. So you see, he has won a car. But there are four more cars to be won, plus other amazing prizes and many more in the Giant Mart Open and Win promotion from July to October 2016. Just buy a can of Giant Mart, open a lid, and the number you find under it, voila, you can go to any Roman distributor or Royal Boat Depots to redeem your prizes instantly. Giant Mart Open and Win promotion. On Napo, terms and conditions apply. We have seen that even in the Green Book. Government before the Mahama-led administration have said the same thing. Is this a matter of us constructing the roads at the wrong places? I think it's, uh, the rate of development is taking too long. It's really taking too long. So if private sector is ahead of the infrastructure development, then they will be picking up the cost. For instance, in a lot of instances, a private sector will have to you know, extend electricity to the factory at its own cost. Now, it makes it unattractive. It makes it very expensive to them because you need to borrow, you know, expensive interest rate and then do infrastructure, which you shouldn't be doing. You know, so it, it's how we escalate the process. So, yes, we are building road and, you know, a lot has happened over the past five years or so, but private sector's expectation is that it should be, we should escalate the process and do more than we are doing now. But one important area which is really, really uh, at the heart of private sector is access to funds. And the government's role in the um, the treasure bull market is really the biggest challenge at this point. But what, what would you advise the government to do when you know it has to get the money to be able to construct the roads and then extend the electrification and all that? It's still, it, Can I ask it, you a it, question? It doesn't have the money. Can I ask you a question? Go, go ahead. How, do you spend what you don't have? You, you, should, you no, you can't. You can't do Precisely. that. Precisely. So it's the, it's the discipline we are talking about. But every time, because we see this window, and it's happening, you know, we are dealing with a lot of bad decisions in the past, and that is what has brought us to where we are. Yeah, so, and it's, so not going to hap it's not going to happen overnight. So, so my point is, it, 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 because we have taken the bad decisions over time, it has become a chicken and egg situation for us, in that, look, government knows what it should do, but it doesn't have the money, and it has already accrued debts over the, over the, over the past years. And so what does it do? Should it borrow more? And then, and then so you say the restructuring of the world, so. and restructuring of the debt, as the minister talked about today, is one of it. But the other thing, you need to take critical decisions in terms of how you spend, so that then we all know that we are beginning to reduce or spend what you have. So let's give us another three years. We are going to deal with the problem. But then if that does not happen, then obviously you can't deal with the problem. Do you so, see a change in government being a problem or a threat to uh, some of what's, what appears to be good policies that have come to play in trying to save our economy? I think that we need continuity. We need continuity. Uh, you see, continuity of good policies, but reversal of bad policies. Yeah, because obviously if it's not helping, it has to be reversed. But for all the good policies, there should be continuity. Another area you spoke about that I'm happy with is ICT. Now, I was reading about the growth of the United Arab Emirates and the fact that decades ago, they had in the, they had the vision to include the growth of technology as they planned their, their, their uh, kingdom. But in our case, I still think that we're doing things the manual ways. Perhaps I'm not there and I may not have the full information, but you have worked in this area. What do you think is happening as far as ICT is concerned? And what I would say is that the private sector has, uh, as far as I'm concerned, has embraced technology significantly. Of course, there are areas we need to deal with. One of them, for instance, will be even services by the various mobile phone, you know, uh, cell phone operators. You think about data. We still have problems with service providers. And the thing is, the, I mean, the enforcement of regulation should happen. You know, so private sector has embraced, but the thing is the infrastructure is not adequate. And the other thing is the quality of service is not um, excellent. So what has happened is that even though it's been embraced, it's still suboptimal because um, we struggle to get quality service. So sometimes you want to send an email and then half a day the system is down. What are you know? the expectations of private sector when it comes to that? I know you've mentioned in infrastructure. Yes. You want so, so for instance, private sector cannot invest in the infrastructure, the national infrastructure to carry the bandwidth and all that. But private sector can participate in, uh, um, in delivering the service. 
I, I hope you get it. So government need to facilitate the infrastructure. So when you talk about uh, ICT backbone, I'm sh I know something has been done, but the question is that, uh, is it enough for the private sector to tap into? Because private sector cannot just go around the country and put broadband or, you know, um, a huge, you know, systems in place, infrastructure across the whole country to deliver ICT. Do, do you think that as a country, as a state, we have the vision of doing that? I haven't seen that significantly in the budget. Just like you said about the United Arab Emirates. It, you know, it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a difficult decision you take driven by a vision to transform your country from one point into a mainstream ICT environment. And that needs you to do certain things. Now, when you're doing things, you know, you're you are not going the full extreme, and then you're doing, doing it in bits and pieces, and you know, you have integration problems and all that. You can achieve that goal. But again, it comes back to resources. So sometimes, one of the ways in which you do this, is go into partnerships. Go to partnerships that can deliver this, and then find a way to pay back over time, because um, people will use the service and, and, and pay for the service. So you can use that to pay back the cost of putting uh, the infrastructure and the systems in place. But I'm, I'm grateful you made time to, uh, to talk to us. I think you'd have to go, you have to go uh, into the plenary session now. And I'm absolutely, I look forward to the future when we talk again. Uh, looks like future, future is good for me right now. <laughs> you see, you're talking yes. about the future. So, so yeah. give yourself maybe another four years and we'll talk about it before the next the elections, you know, then. Well, well maybe at another time, we'll just invite you onto the program. No, I know, and then, I know, yes. And then have a, a lengthier conversation All right. on, on, the, on the private sector. Uh, because for a lot, a lot of young people, uh, they are no longer looking to government for employment. They are no longer look, looking to someone's business for employment. They are becoming players themselves in uh, the, the private sector. And we need to, you know, tag those people along as we have our conversation about the country. I'm very grateful for your time. You're welcome. And indeed a pleasure having this meeting with you. Absolutely, Thank you. Absolutely. Right. We'll be talking to Mr. Bennett Quinty. He is a strategy and financial consultant. He's also founder and chief executive for SYNC Consult, the into management and consultancy services. We'll be right back. You're watching Business Sign. Don't go away. Wow, it would not let Matali. Is she being? How was she? Nalem clothing, just great for all occasions. It makes for a good outfit to church or the mosque. Marriage ceremonies. For the confidence of good looks, it's got to be Nalem. Nalem, the confident edge. I couldn't agree more with uh, Bennett on the subject of ICT and the need for government to, you know, be the backbone infrastructure for technology growth and development here in the country. If you missed the conversation with Bennett Spenty on creating an enabling environment for uh, the country and generally private sector, you would want to go to YouTube, you watch the full video there. However, still on the program, we have the commodities and forex market activities, but before we, we, we take a look at that, why don't we bring you your investment tips for the week? Yes, the last time we talked more on public listed companies or capital from the public market, which is a stock exchange market. Today, I want to dwell more on private equity. Private equity is a form of capital to businesses. With this capital, an institution or a partnership normally comes together and provides long-term funds to businesses with certain conditions. What they normally do is they identify businesses that are doing well or has a potential for growth. And this private equity firm or private equity funds approaches the businesses, do due diligence on them, and invest needed capital with agreed understandings for the number of years that their funds will be in the business. They normally will take over management of that business 
they may not necessarily do away with the owners of the business. You will be part owner of that business. They work with you with a number of years, mainly to grow the business, to increase the value for your business, and provide strategic direction for these businesses, whilst they also grow their capital. Private equity funds have several advantages. One, it gives the fund owners power or arm of control over their funds. They also help grow your business for you since they are bringing up-to-date management or corporate, good corporate governance practices and make the business viable. They expand the economy, they provide more taxes to government, and they give you a lot of opportunity to grow your businesses. This is what we are trying to bring into our local term. This is what we are trying to help SMEs or small and medium scale businesses to get flexible, relatively cheaper, and add management into businesses in Africa and Ghana for this matter to grow. Micro private equity, it's what I am presenting to you today. So you saw David Wako there bringing you your investment tip for the week. David Wako is with World Financial Services. He is founder of that particular uh, company. You're watching Business Time. It's brought to you by Giant Malt and is powered by the Business and Financial Times newspaper. I'm costumed by Nalem Clothing. My makeup is by Jobin House of Beauty. Now let's get into activities that went on over the week on the commodities and forex markets. That also means that it's time for us to go, but we are short to come back next week. Well, if you missed the program, just log on to YouTube and find the Business and Financial Times page. You see the full conversation we've had with Bennett Fenty. You see all that we brought you in this episode and other episodes as well. But let us hear from you also on social media on what you think about what we've done so far in this season and on all the episodes that you've seen already. My name is Kamini. I'm Mano. This has been Business Time. I'm Costume by Nala and Clothing Maker by Jibin House of Beauty. The program itself is powered by Business and Financial Times newspaper and is brought to you in association with Giant Mods. I'll see you next week. Bye bye.